<laughs> you all right? All right, cheers. Cheers, pal. You all right? What's that? <laughs> What's that? Where's your mm. beer? I haven't got any beer in. It's locked down. I've not been shopping. What's that? I've got a glass of fucking tea. Well, I was going to use wine, but I haven't got any wine either. I'm not drinking. You must be the only person in lockdown who has no alcohol in their house. I know. Well, I've got a load of spirits. What do you want me to do? Just, just do a pint of vodka. Have you ramped it up a bit and put four sugars in it? Go a bit Two mad. sweeteners. <laughs> Two sweeteners. I'll Cheers, be, anyway. I'll be on it. Cheers, yeah. I know this isn't quite really on brand, but I'll, um, I'll do my best when I go shopping next time. What do you mean, blur? Did you not like that? It's first one of the day. You know when you, when you have one? First one of the day. Why well, you've started burping already? It's I don't so know. Gross. I just had the first swing. It's just getting <laughs> oh used to me. Oh, my God. Do you know what I've just realised? Not only what? have you got lockdown hair, you've actually got yeah. lockdown face. What does that, what does that mean? Just dishevelled. Just not looked what? after. Well, obviously. Why would I Two. be looking after my dish? <laughs> What's the point? I'm you, here on my own. Who am I looking after it for? You've got FIFA face. You've been sat in front of a screen for far have, yeah. too long. Yeah, I've got 5am face, yeah. So what's the, what's the crack today? You said you okay, had a, so, a little surprise for me. I don't know what's going well, on here. So so remember your um, really, really intellectual, interesting theory about... <laughs> about well, aliens. Is that what you're going to say? <laughs> what, are you, what are you laughing at? About how we're the aliens. Remember? <laughs> yeah. How you just, we were just having a conversation. It was perfectly normal. You went, I've got something I want to talk to you about. I was like, what? Do you believe in aliens? Well, yeah. It's just an important question. Well, well, and I was like talking about the Drake equation, but I couldn't remember what the, actually the answer was. And there's it another thing. It was boring as the, fuck. It went on for hours, whatever you said. There's the, well, the, I could have started talking about the Fermi paradox as well, but no. instead of that, Instead of that, well, rather than me sort of half half arsely trying to explain something I seem to have remembered, half remembered, um, I uh, got in touch with an astrobiologist um, at the University of Westminster. And, um, really? Uh, yeah, he's called Lewis Dartnell, and he's an astrobiologist, and he also wrote a book which was really cool called The Knowledge, which was basically like a blueprint of how to reboot civilization in the event of a, an apocalypse, so a pandemic or an asteroid strike or a nuclear war. That kind of felt pretty relevant. So um, he's, he's going to talk to us today, and you can ask him all about why aren't there aliens, or if there are, where are they, and so on and so on, and he can tell you. Sweet! That sounds wicked. You up for that? Yeah, right. man. Well, right, is he ready? Well, can, we, can we get him on? Yeah, we'll dial him in. We'll dial him in. Oh, that sounds wicked. Is it, uh, this is all like magic to me. It's like, this is like wizardry. What's going on? I don't even know how it's happening, but it's unbelievable. <laughs> right, where is he? Hey, Lewis. Good to hey. see you, Lewis. Meet Will. Will Hi, mate. Lewis. Hey, Will. How you doing, man? Yeah, not bad. Are you ha all right? Have you got your pint? I've got, well, I've got a pint of water. Cheers. Will, you've got your pint? <laughs> Fucking hell, I'm, I'm on a, my own I here. I have a pint oh, of that's tea. That's either a very weak lager there, Will, or some lime juice. Either <laughs> <laughs> like He's mugged right you right off. He's mugged you right off. Why, 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 why off. have you got to be so observative? Observative? <laughs> observative? I can't even say it. <laughs> if observed well, it is a, a shandy. Because it's early in the day, I can't start with a pint early in the day. No, no, fair a, enough, fair enough. Ralph tells me... Uh, um, that you you wrote a book or something about aliens or something to do with that or that's not I what I told you at all. It. That's literally that's literally how, not how what I told you. Thirty seconds up? ago, that is not what I told you. Yeah, I'm I told saying, you wrote, I mentioned aliens. You said you've got a guy who you know. I told you he wrote to a me. book about how to reboot civilization from scratch. Oh, well, I don't know. All right, so, so Lewis, I don't know much about this. This is Ralph uh, has got you on, which is great to speak to you. Uh, just let us know what is it. What is it you do? Um, let us know. Tell me. Yeah, so I'm a scientist. Um, I'm a professor at the University of Westminster, um, and my science is in astrobiology. It's, it's the science of looking into the possibility of life in other worlds. So Ooh. to search for aliens, if you like. That there is a science that's all about searching for aliens on other planets, uh, and that's what I do. Why don't you tell Lewis your, your theory in full that, that you that you... You, that you told me. Tell, tell him it in detail. But like jo jokes aside, I mean, it's very difficult going to be saying jokes aside. But well, 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 try not to laugh, Lewis. Are, is that what you're trying to say? Try will, not to laugh, will, Lewis. Is that what you're trying to Lewis say? Lewis will have. Lewis will have. I would think a scientific basis in saying why that is unlikely. And as I also scientists very rarely say that can't be possible because science tends to go well. That's not likely given the evidence. But I'm interested to know from a scientific point of view why your theory's bollocks. 
You just want him to laugh at me, you twat, don't you? Basically, yes. <laughs> right, I'll tell, tell you the theory. No, what it is, is obviously I watch a lot of these documentaries and obviously they're made to... <laughs> That's a loose definition already. I say, we'll, go on. We'll, we'll let documentaries go for the time. <laughs> yeah, so do- oh, documentaries, are doing a lot of, <laughs> documentaries doing a lot of heavy lifting in that sentence. All right, on. I've seen a few... Thi- where where um, there's a lot of uh, hieroglyphics and a lot of things they've found where it shows that they people used to worship sky people, people that come from the stars, people, and they and they made lots of huge structures or huge signals or signs that can only be seen from up there in the sky. So, if we can't fly, who is that for? Why are they making things that can, they, they, that they can't even see from the ground? But they don't have any technology to see, and they're perfect. Plus, there is so many structures that have been found. That what are you laughing at, Ralph? Piss off! Just These structures that have been found that could have been that, that are years and years and years and years, millions of years old. That that they have. There's materials that have been found that we don't have on this planet now. There's also um, I, I don't understand why there's so many. Um, massive structures around the world that are man-made, like the pyramids and all these other different things, that, that when you, if you put a map over the world, they actually, uh, longitude, latitude, they all match up perfectly. Um, and these are all, uh, th- th- there's got to be a reason for this. It can't be a coincidence. And, and how did we do these things without the means to do so? How do we build these things without the means to do so. I don't, and to make the pyramids so perfect without the measuring tools that we have today. I don't understand that no one knows. And that's where I think that we were hyper intelligent at some time, some time ago, more intelligent than we are now. So I think Definitely. we must have, we must have left and come back to teach, our, teach us now because the, because the, the world was obviously in a shit place at one time with a big freeze <laughs> and all that. Listen, that's so why there's a lot going on. With, with the big freeze and all that, it's quite, it's quite some, some way like to book into details Because the details <laughs> are very, very fragmented. So I just no, think that's, very, that's my philosophy. And I'm probably I think he's a bit frozen, embarrassed. though. What? I think he's frozen. I, I thought think, he was born I think he hung up. I think, I think he hung up on you ages ago. Oh, I'm no. Look, I'm looking at him thinking. <laughs> I'm looking at him thinking, I have bored him to death. He's frozen he's, himself. He's mugged you right off. <laughs> So, Will, that was what I thought of your theory. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Lewis. Tell, tell me again about how the pyramids were created by the, by the aliens. <laughs> so, so you can just turn me off again. <laughs> mugging you right off. You know, so it's just weird I can't listen to this shit. Where in Will's um, rambling <laughs> monologue, <laughs> whereabouts did you hang up on him uh, and just go, I can't do this so anymore? So I think you were, you were talking about the Nazca lines uh, for a bit, weren't you, Will? About the, the Nazca the kind of lines, lines, that's it. <laughs> yeah, the, what are you laughing at? That you, because you couldn't name them. You were just like, there's these things. What I people can't remember can the name of them. The welcome signs. I and Lewis is like, it means the Nazca lines. Well, the Nazca <laughs> lines, yeah. Them, I find really interesting because obviously we've done a long time before we had flight so if why make them if only they can only have been seen from from up in the sky I, I i just don't understand that and obviously the pyramids and all the other the, structures the, that they we were, can't explain they were religious pictograms weren't they it, it was religious cults were marking out on the ground pictures which would be seen by their gods and their gods are in heaven so i'm not i don't find it surprising that they were making things which could be seen from above how did they make them like that then if they couldn't see them but from the ground but you, you, you can see them from above. And I've been to Nazca yeah, and I didn't ground. pay the hundreds of dollars it cost to go in a light aircraft and see them from above. But they're very impressive even from the ground. But the fact that you can see them from there doesn't mean that they can only possibly have been created by someone flying in, in an airplane. No, I mean, for, I for the view. I mean, why create something that can only be seen from up above if you can't get above to see it? Because they're creating for their gods, who presumably are in the heavens. So I think there's two questions, right? There's, why did they make something on the ground that can only be seen from above? And I think the answer to that is because they were making it for the gods, and the gods are in the heavens looking down. And the second question might be, is it possible that they can create these shapes without being able to see it from the sky themselves? And again, I I don't see that being a problem either, because it's just a matter of measuring things out and then counting the number of steps, right? Like when, when you're creating a building, you 
you plan out the foundations and the ground, even if you're not flying in a helicopter looking straight down at it. You just you just okay. make some measurements with a bit of string and a bit of ruler. What I mean, obviously, this is a, this is a huge topic, but very. It, it, can you break down in simple and basic terms? If you were what what the what the uh, hurdles are, if you wanted to have a self sustaining colony on Mars. What, what what do you need? So you'd need a do- some sort of dome, some sort of habitat because you can't be in the Martian environment. You need water, you need food. Yeah, yeah. And those are the base. So where, where from? How do you do that? Yeah, so my last book, and I don't know if you've, if you've come across this or not, Will, but um, the book um, that Ralph and I were talking about last time we chatted um, is called The Knowledge, How to Rebuild Our World from Scratch. It, it's basically a manual about how you could reboot civilization after an apocalypse. Is a, is a kind of thought experiment. It's like a playful science book about how you could go about recovering everything from history as quickly as possible if, if you ever needed to. And I've had a bunch of meetings with um, you know, different engineers and scientists and people working at NASA about how you could do something similar on Mars. How could you encapsulate everything you need to survive into like a, a single rocket, launch it to Mars, so you then unpack it when you get there and become a self-sustaining colony. So basically, like the film, the Matt Damon film, like the Martian. Martian. Yeah, exactly. So, so that was quite well, actually, accurate. That was quite yeah, accurate. Yeah, was that accurate? It was, I mean, obviously it was fictionalised, but you thought that was like, had some, quite a lot of basis in it, science. It was pretty accurate. So I'm still kicking myself that it wasn't me that wrote The Martian and then got a six-figure book deal and a six-figure movie deal. <laughs> yeah, um, you could have. You know, you, you're we, the knowledge. You've got all? the knowledge. <laughs> yeah. But, but so, the, so the, the Martian is basically the overlap between my research scientifically and Mars and my last book, The Knowledge About How You Do Everything for Yourself from Scratch. Oh. Um, and Andy Weir, who's the guy that wrote The Martian, he, you know, he's a, he's a really interesting guy, he bounced around a couple of emails between us. Um, and he had a really neat idea about how you could, you know, have you heard of Robinson Crusoe or kind of Swiss family Robinson? Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Classic children's books about people yeah. washing up on a deserted beach yeah, yeah, as, as yeah. a maroon sail and kind of starting from scratch. So he did that not on a, on a desert island, but on Mars. You know, it's, it's the modern day equivalent of, of Robinson Crusoe. And it's a really yeah. good story. Um, the only thing that's not accurate in The Martian is the first five minutes when they have that original disaster that means Matt Damon mm. has to get trapped on Mars, which yeah. is this kind of great big tornado dust storm, um, yeah. which was not possible on Mars because the atmosphere is too thin. But the air is just too thin. You could be stood in the middle of a hurricane on Mars and not be able to feel it brushing against your legs. Wow, is that yeah, true? So it's, so it's actually less inhospitable than you might think. Well, in, ter- in, in terms respect. of storms, yeah. So Mars does yeah, get... Well, you can't breathe. You can't breathe. You're not going to get a blow, <laughs> yeah. but you can't fly a kite. <laughs> yeah, you would have you been exactly. satiated to death long before kite, the storm for, so, so, so if you're a kite lover, don't go to fucking Mars. It's pointless. <laughs> don't go Mars to is not for you. <laughs> Mars isn't for you. All kite lovers out there, it's gone. Mars is gone. <laughs> Tick it off, yeah. don't go. Um, did um, I? I remember hearing a, a thing about uh, why going to Mars. It, I was just thinking, Lewis. You were just talking about how look. One of the real reasons for wanting to do more space exploration and go to Mars, or whatever, is there are ways to make money, and you can always follow capitalism to know like what the next sort of development is yeah. going to be. But somebody was saying that at the moment, as a species, as a race, um, you know, you wrote a book about a potential apocalypse and how to survive after. We well, didn't write about the apocalypse, but how to survive after. But like. Um, something could wipe us out. An asteroid strike could wipe us out, like as a species, at any point really. But if we get to two planets and we self-sustain on two planets, the chances of being wiped out as a species dwindle to almost zero. Yeah, that, that's the idea behind the universe ends. The idea is not to have all of your eggs in one basket and to have a, a self-sustaining colony on Mars. So if if the worst ever were to happen on Earth and we get wiped out here, it's almost like you've got a you know kind of a backup file on Mars. Mm-hmm. And then people could come back from Mars at some point in the future and recolonize the Earth once things have settled down again. Oh, um, which is just call Bruce Willis, because he did yeah, well yeah. in... Get him to deflect Armageddon. the asteroid in the first place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just yeah, drill guy, down, yeah. land on it, drill down and blow it up for the middle. It it's quite, it seemed quite easy. How plausible was that, Lewis, by the way? Was that well, just I, I do love nonsense. Hollywood and the Americans' response to, there's a big thing coming our way, let's nuke <laughs> blow it. Blow it up. Let's nuke, <laughs> yeah, exactly. nuke the damn we're thing. We've got to drill down and get in the heart of it and blow up for yeah. the middle. And you're going to <laughs> land a spaceship on a, on a meteorite that's coming in that's bigger than Texas. Yeah. So, I mean, there are plans... <laughs> well, they did it all right. There are, there are serious plans of, for what would you need to do to deflect an asteroid 
if you saw it, if you discovered it on a, on a collision course with Earth. The last yeah. thing you'd want to do is blow the damn thing up because then yeah. Yeah. what you've done is turned a single bullet, which might have missed, into a shotgun blast of fragments, <laughs> which will then just pepper the entire Earth's surface. Right. And if like a, like a big asteroid could do some very, very bad global damage, you, know, you could collapse agriculture with a fallout from a big impact from, from an asteroid. But if you blow it up and turn it into lots of small pieces, you then just wipe out every city when they get hit by a smaller piece anyway. So it, it's, mm. it's not really a solution. And what people, <laughs> and people like NASA and European Space Agency are looking at doing is trying to deflect the asteroid so it misses us. Not destroy it, but just nudge it to one side. So so it fire a rocket into oh, it. Sure, so you yeah. just can we not just reverse it. the gravity? Like you get two magnets and put them against each other, you reverse the proportion of the gravity. So you just put like a field. So we've got gravity this way, wait. but on the other side of it, it pushes it away. Well, you know what, Will, that, that is exactly wait, what wait, people wait, are wait. talking of oh, doing. Oh, that is exactly oh, what it's been proposed. That was clever, yeah, you see, did. Wait. <laughs> Wait, what? Kind of. gravitational field. No, like, magnet, like two so magnets. Start... You push them together, and what do they do? They push away. Right. And hey, ask okay. it, ask him, are they going to do that? <laughs> Go on, Lewis. Think it's Lewis. So, is one proposal, one very serious gravi- proposal, is called a gravity tug. And if you fly See? a big spaceship <laughs> alongside the asteroid, the gravity of the spaceship will pull the asteroid slightly behind it. So you could use that to kind of tug the asteroid onto, onto a different course. Right. So it's different a bit different than what I said. <laughs> similar, yeah. similar but you different. You started with magnetic fields. You were going to create a <laughs> gravitational field. I love that, like, you're like, someone will fill in the details later. <laughs> Let's get a field. Insert a gravitational field. Here. You don't no. like two magnets. No. Okay, scientists, off you go. Well, yeah, <laughs> we've got a gravitational pull. If we can reverse that on the outer, on the out, out of uh, <laughs> our atmosphere, so anything coming in just gets fucked off. Like a, like a yeah, big... gravity doesn't... Can we not really do that? work like that <laughs> well someone someone some clever fucker knows how to do it you know that's what we're like, you you like that. you've also just invented science. the wormhole that's pretty much what oh, you I need to do to yeah, hold really? open a wormhole as well see i didn't know i was that clever there you go. see i think i yeah, might have invented that. some you do learn something new every day <laughs> would you be in, would you be wow. interested in going to mars if you could would you go not myself so like like we're saying earlier like I don't think space flight is nearly as glamorous or as comfortable as people get an impression of from watching yeah. films. <laughs> like you are living in a tight, closed, claustrophobic space with other people that you might get on with, well with, but like people will get on each other's nerves if you're under. They would get on my tits, and I'll tell you right people now, get on, tits, get on my exactly. nerves. People think lockdown's bad. Will has to keep leaving his house to do little videos for Instagram, <laughs> and I realise that he's, he's, he's like, oh, I'm just doing this video. It's like bollocks. You're just trying to get away from the wife and kids for five minutes. <laughs> Sometimes I just go and sit in my car and do it in my drive. <laughs> just drive around the corner and park up again. Yeah, exactly. I Will, do- are you having an affair? No, I'm just parking around the corner. I just, I just need a break. So I've got, I've actually got an electric skateboard, right? I've got an electric skateboard, yeah. and I, I, I've been going on it a lot more because of lockdown, just to get out. And I know they say go out for fitness, but I can't be asked with the walking and running and stuff. So I went out and I fell off and look, smashed all my arm. Oh, dude, my arm. Look, it was all black on the inside. I was honestly, my arm was, it was horrendous. And I just thought that's because you're 44 and you're on a skateboard, <laughs> on an electric skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I can top you. I've never told anyone this. You've got an electric skateboard. I've got an air wheel, which I've never, <laughs> ever ridden. I, bought, I was like, I have to get one of those. What is that? What it's is a that unicycle. Off? It's a, an electric unicycle, a balanced gyroscopic oh, unicycle right, yeah. Yeah. that you charge up and then you and you ride it along. And I was like, oh my God, you'd look so cool. You know what, though? You I bet you look like a twat. You look a prick. You, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could have told you that. An absolute <laughs> prick. I rode it once and went, what am I doing? I'm nearly 40. <laughs> I went to I'm the shop. I went to the shop on my electric skateboards. Got some beers. And on the way back, I thought I'll go downhill. And then I was going downhill, <laughs> and I couldn't slow it down. And I tried to pull the wheel back to slow it down. It just threw me off the front. Oh but shit! In, in, in good, good faith, uh, I didn't break one beer. Not one well, beer there you smashed. Go. So, so I thought at least there's there's a god somewhere. I, I, I hope you any and rolled and kept the uh, kept the cans of beer Mate, safe. Listen, is it true? Right, going back to what you were saying before. Um, is it true that if there was if there was like a, ever a, a nuclear attack or if there was anything that, that happened that cockroaches could survive? <laughs> it's a good question. What is that? There it is. What is that, there, Ralph? That's my air wheel. Oh, brilliant! You stand you stand on top of it and go along. You look an absolute cock. <laughs> Sell it. Oh you, man, Ralph! Honestly, do you look- I rode it once. I thought, oh, I'll ride, I'll ride it to the tube once, and I sort of rode it to the tube not very well because I wasn't very good on it yet because you have to balance. It's like like when you first go skiing or yeah. whatever, and like 
I suddenly realised what it was like to be a woman, like wearing a vest top, because every builder I went past went, oi, oi! <laughs> <laughs> Ralph, do you reckon yeah, you look I'm more out. or less of a prat on your air wheel than you did on a Segway in like, you know, the early 2000s? Because the Segways <laughs> were the future <laughs> of transport, apparently. Yeah, that's a very good point. Mm. I think probably even more, if anything. Yeah. Basically, once you pass 40, electric skateboards and air wheels are not, they're not appropriate. Let's no. be fair. I like, I like mine, um, but now I fell off it, I'm a bit dubious. <laughs> yeah, I just asked a question. Hey, go, on, go on, Will. Sorry, what, what question were you asking? Well, I, uh, I heard that if there was, uh, say, if there was a nuclear attack or a nuclear bomb went off, and you know, they say it was the end of life as we know it. I've heard that cockroaches could actually survive that. And why is that so? I mean, because you were saying you have this very tough bacteria or whatever it is that you're, you're studying in your lab. Is that true that cockroaches are that? Yeah, co cockroaches are pretty hardy, um, but I think there's, you know, there's lots of other kinds of insects that live underground oh, really? and probably could have survived a nuclear war as well. Really? Because um, I've just, always thought just, cockroaches were a bit like aliens. In a sense. They, they're oh, certainly God. ugly. <laughs> is this, no, do you know because of the way... Thing? Cockroaches not from here, right? <laughs> no, it's not that. Next? It's not that. It's just, I remember... It kind of is. No, they just, Look at your face. Do you know what? There's, there's another thing that I'm going to tell you about aliens in a minute, but I'll tell you this about cockroaches. Cockroaches, I went to Florida years ago when we misses, and this cockroach went... Like I heard it and it landed on, on the blind and I was like, bastard, because I ate them. So I got this spray <laughs> and I emptied a half a can of spray on this thing. It, it was dead. It was like on its back. For three days, this thing sat there on its back. <laughs> and then the fourth day, it got up and walked off. And I couldn't believe... I, I Do you reckon it was like the court approach like, Jesus rising from the dead <laughs> after three days? <laughs> yeah, it was. was like, yeah, it's now there's now a whole cockroach religion. <laughs> they're, they're which involves you. You're the Judas. You are the person who had to yeah, kill the yes, cockroach yes, Jesus yeah, exactly. to, I'm make, telling you now, to make him the myth that he is. Couldn't believe it. it. It just lay there and then just come round and walked off. And I thought, if you're going to kill a cockroach, you're going to have to stand on it or smash it with something. Because they'll, if them I sprays wonder, don't work. I reckon anybody also who's listening to this is thinking the same thing I'm thinking, which has not been mentioned, which is, how did you not clean it up for three days? <laughs> I didn't like it. I just moved why it to the you, side. Why did you spray it and then what? Just walk around? No, it, was it, the it, 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 it was in the corner. I just whipped <laughs> yeah. it to the corner and I just... It was lying It was lying in state for three days because you respected it so much. <laughs> no, it was. It was more every time I get up, I go, yeah, have that, dickhead. That was it. So it kept on You're leaving it as a warning to the other cockroaches, <laughs> weren't yeah. you? That's what, yeah, exactly. Look what yeah. else yeah. comes it's in. It's like a, a scarecroach. Yes, very good. That's what you're getting. Very good, Ralph. This is my last thing on aliens, right? This is Yeah, ask You've got one. You've got one more conspiracy one more. It's or not alien conspiracy. thing to ask Lewis because we got to let him go. Is it possible and potential, which I've also seen, that aliens could be inhabiting in our sea because we only know ten percent of what's in our oceans. It, we don't know what's down there, and there's a possibility. And I think if you if you've not discovered it, is it classed as an alien, even if it's on this planet? Like in in the sea, there's creatures we don't know about down there. Are they aliens or are they not? Because we don't know them. So one one really interesting idea, right? One interesting theory is that life on Earth didn't get started once; it got started several times. And really? all we've discovered in biology so far are the forms of life that are like us, that they came from the same origin, the same bacteria in a hydrothermal vent somewhere. But if the conditions on Earth were suitable for life to get started once, they were probably suitable for it to pop up in several different places. So maybe there's like an entire other tree of life on our planet that we've not discovered yet because we're just looking for it in the wrong way. Or it mm. might be surviving environments that our kind of life can simply not tolerate or survive in. So like, like saying, very bottom of the seafloor where it's incredibly high pressure. Closer to the core. Or, yeah. or closer, mm. yeah, deeper in the Earth's crust where it's too hot for our kind of life to survive. Mm. So that there could be what has been described as a shadow biosphere, like a whole ecosystem of life. Wow. It's not alien because wow. it is earthlings. You know, it, it's life that got yeah, started yeah. here, but it is fundamentally different to us in the way that life on another planet we be built on fundamentally different chemistry. That's what I mean. Wow. See, that's what so, I'm so, and, and the interesting thing is that might be hiding in plain sight. You know, it might be in the soil. We've just not been able to recognise it for what it is yet. It could, it could be right. up your nose, Will. You could have bacteria in you that are not from our same tree of life. I could, I could be riddled like with it. Bacteria. That's fascinating. That's, well, that, that's, Will, I was going to say, before go on. Before we let Lewis go, I was going to say, do you, do you feel, I certainly do, but like, do you feel like, 
Do you feel like you've learned, had some things clarified you st- uh, and learned stuff today? But that, even that in itself is, that was amazing. That's a fascinating thing I, I th- to take I away. I think he's completely think. poo-pooed all my philosophy anyway. I think, I think, I think, <laughs> I think, I think, I think, what, I think my idea is, I, I like, I like to believe in things because I, I just do. I, I've, got, I've got sort of that, that sort of mind. I like to, I like to imagine that the, there is these things and things can happen. And when you speak to somebody who's as intelligent as you are, and you put it into terms that's understandable, and then it, it possibly isn't. We're never going to see an alien, and we're never going to. And, this, and UFOs are probably not, you know, intelligent life flying around our atmosphere. But I still like to believe it. I still like to believe but there's a percentage think, of a chance that, that there's a lot that we equally, don't know. Don't you think it's equally as, and if not sort of more uh, fascinating and sort of weirdly magical, the idea that whilst that might not be true. There also might be an entire shadow biosphere of that's amazing. life that nobody knows about that's actually here. That's amazing. And to me, yeah. in terms of conspiracy, theory, I get more excited about the idea of that. I mean, it's still a theory. You yeah. don't, yeah. don't know yet, but like the idea that that's a theory that's... I think there's like enough magic in the reality and science <laughs> that you don't necessarily need to go looking elsewhere. Yeah, well, I also think why we're all busy looking up into Mars and all these planets, I mean, why don't we just see if we can delve deeper into our oceans and find out what else is down there? Because we don't, 10%, it's nothing. But we're doing nothing. that as well, though, right? It's not oh, one or the other. You, you can explore space and also explore the, the oceans as well. Exactly. Well, I think it's very. I think it's important to know what we have. What be. Behave, Will. You won't even go swimming in the sea. <laughs> no, fuck that. Not not with the turds <laughs> floating past with bits of toilet paper attached, right? <laughs> no, no, not since Blackpool, yeah. Listen, you I, won't even swim in the sea. No, I, no. I'm like, oh, do you go scuba diving? Do you have bollocks? No, because you know why? Because I'm swimming that way, and I don't know what the fuck's behind me. And I think we we can't breathe in this. We can't breathe underwater. We don't belong in there. You, no one ever gets attacked by sharks in fucking Sainsbury's, do they? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> don't go in. Don't go in. Do these people in Australia and that, they have all these warnings of sharks and they go, oh, I got bit by a shark. Yeah, you so you should. You're in its back garden. That's what. That's where it lives. Don't go in there. I love, I love that in the space of a minute we've gone from going, why don't we explore the oceans to fuck that, the sharks there. No, it's true. Without even skipping a beat. I can go swimming in in, in this country near Cellos as soon as I get burdened. As soon as I put my foot in, I think, nah, mate. <laughs> Nah, when you bit, bit cold, bit, bit nippy for me. <laughs> it's bit, yeah, no, I just think even the plants don't like you. You go in the sea and you get stung by some, you know, oh, it's audible, salt water, it's audible, it's not for me, we don't belong in there. People who go, oh, I love it in the sea. I just think, yeah. You're a scuba diver, you. Lewis? I've, I've done some scuba diving in the past, yeah, when I was younger. I did, did the paddy yeah. test and did a couple of dives. Yeah. I did a lot of skydiving as well. I, I enjoyed that kind of did diving you? more, yeah. Will, would you do skydiving? Do you know what? I said maybe one day, but again, I, I think why people enjoy skydiving is the, is the fact that they didn't die. I, I think you might be right. It's the yeah, endorphin well, exactly. yeah, rush from what? not I'm having right. died this right. time jumping I'm out of a plane. Right. Yeah, you manage that every day. Every day you're like, another day I didn't die. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I just think, why, why put your body through something? My body could oh, just go, nah, it. I've had it, and just kill. I, I could die. You know what I mean? Why it. am I going to risk that? Yesterday, Lewis, Will agreed, because I was like, he was talking about how he wanted to take me fishing. All right. And like just angling by a lake and I was like I couldn't think of anything I'd be less interested in and we made a deal that if I went fishing with him he thinks I've forgotten this <laughs> then he would come if it, he would come in a helicopter with me with me flying it oh yeah no so, I, uh, have you got a, a pilot's license then Ralph or, or yes, is this like yeah. double jeopardy Flying a that helicopter would be quite these, something. and you don't know how to fly That'd be a helicopter. Amazing. I was like, I've never done this Trust before. Me, how hard can it be? Really Will strap it right now. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. do you know what? It's, it's the worst thing I've said ever. I mean, I, he's going well, fishing. What could possibly go wrong? And I've got to go up in an helicopter. Them things get don't get attacked glide. by the sharks in the river, can't he? No, we you don't go, we go to lakes. Yeah. We go to lakes. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, um, thanks for coming oh, on, mate. It's been really nice speaking yeah, to you. It's been uh, interesting, great. interesting, yeah. And it's nice for Ralph to have someone intelligent to talk to for once. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just, yeah. I, do you know what's really fun, though, is like, as you know, as much as you joke about, like, oh, my questions are daft, it's like, there's always an angle where there's loads to learn because Lewis can be like, well, yes, you say that, but actually you've not thought of this. It's like, I've learned loads. I don't know about you. Yeah, I just, I, great. Yeah, I know I have, I have. It's been really good to have you on. Thanks for coming on, mate. No, thanks for having me, guys. It's uh, been fun. Take care of yourselves and I uh, okay. hope you get through the, the lockdown. Yeah, good luck, with, good luck more, with your um, mission to Mars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If there's any more conspiracy theories about aliens, we'll I'll, I'll let you know. Bag. I'll be giving you a call. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Thanks, mate. See you, mate. Cheers. Ta-da, mate. Bye.